I grew up in a town called Carmichael, which is a suburb outside of Sacramento, California. And I actually knew that I wanted to be on TV from a very young age because the TV was my babysitter. My parents were divorced when I was young and my dad was always working. And so my sister and I would just be home alone with our grandma with the TV on all the time. And we didn't have a lot of money. And so I thought if I could, if I could get on TV, maybe I can one day have a better life. So I used to have fantasies about being part of the Brady Bunch. But I was from Carmichael, California, and I didn't know anyone who knew anyone. So how do you go about getting a job in television? Well, I went to a, a local mall because they had auditions for a teen magazine show. And there were probably about 500 high school students who showed up. and. Miraculously, I was one of the four high school students chosen to host this show called Scratch. That show was actually produced by a Chinese guy named Matt Chan, who kind of treated me like his daughter um, because I, I was Chinese. And his advice to me, and I was 16 years old when I got the job, was never sleep with anyone to get a job. And so I can proudly say I never have. <laughs> After doing three years at Scratch, the job that changed my life came when I was 18 for a show called Channel One News, which was a news broadcast seen in middle schools and high schools across the country. And that show hired eight correspondents to cover stories around the world. So by 21 years old, I was covering the civil war in Afghanistan. And um, by 22, I was covering the, the democracy movement in Iran and in China. And it gave me this incredible opportunity to travel and, and be immersed in the world. And so my desire went from just wanting to be on TV to, to have a better life to wanting to tell stories and communicate stories to, uh, to an American audience. As far as role models are concerned, Connie Chung still, you know, when I think about people I most admired as a young person, it was definitely Connie Chung. And I don't know a single Asian journalist of my generation who hasn't wanted to be Connie Chung or hasn't admired Connie Chung. I got the fortunate opportunity to get a note from Connie after I got the job as one of the co-hosts on The View. I got this job amidst this crazy co-host search in which thousands of people from all over the country applied and when I was chosen as one of the hosts, I got flowers and notes from so many really high profile people, Michael Eisner, Regis Feldman, but I got a note from Connie Chung, my idol, who I'd never met before. And I'll never forget the day that that came in the mail. Um, it was so touching and it just said, I'm so proud of you, love Connie. And I put that note on my cork board. It was the only note that I put on my cork board, and it stayed there the entire time I was at ABC. And we then became friends, and I would email her or call her, and she, I, she would have me over with Maury, and um, she came to my wedding, and she's just become such an incredible friend. And what a lot of people don't realize about Connie's struggle is that the Asian community was really, really hard on her. And they didn't, and I don't think they have any idea of how difficult and how much she had to fight to even get on television. You know, she was sort of this token Asian woman and it was so competitive at the time. I mean, the news business is highly competitive now, but at the time, she was having to compete with so many different kinds of people, none of whom were, were, were ethnic, you know? And, and for Connie, she had to gain the respect of the rest of America and, and try and not be perceived as this token Asian woman. But I want people to know that Connie Chung is such a pioneer and an extraordinary woman at that. Networks right now are struggling to stay relevant. The news industry is struggling to stay relevant. They should take a page from the web and from social media where you have your Kev Jumbas and your Ryan Higgas and your Michelle Fonz because they have millions more followers than network news broadcasts. You know, they really should be taking a page because that's, 
young people aren't watching network news anymore. They're watching YouTube. And so if they were paying attention, they would recognize that the people with the highest number of users or subscribers on YouTube are Asian. Michelle Fan, Kev Jumba, the Fung Brothers. I mean, these people are huge. They have way, way more followers than I do. <laughs> They're also way, way younger than I am, but that's okay, I'll get over it. <laughs> Rolling Stone always has an issue every year called the hot issue. And in 1997, um, I was young in my early 20s, I was named hot reporter. And I, this is when I was a reporter at Channel One News. I was covering stories in Afghanistan and Colombia and, and Saipan. And I was so excited. Like I, I just couldn't believe that this national magazine would name me Hot Reporter. And people in the office were congratulating me and seemed really happy for me. And I went to my mailbox um, at the end of the day, and someone had cut out my picture, someone at my office cut out my picture and drew slanted eyes over the eyes. This was someone I worked with. And that was one of the most devastating things that I'd ever experienced. It was a knife through the heart because to this day, although I have my suspicions, I don't definitively know who did it. And I remember walking out of that mailroom and everybody in that office looked like they could have done it. I never knew. You know, it was, it, I, I couldn't believe that something like that would happen to me in the workplace, you know, because in the workplace you don't, you don't, you don't think of yourself as being separate from anyone else, you know, you're as qualified, you're as competent. But when that happened, it was just, like it still just hurts my heart to even think about it. We work in an industry that is dominated by very aggressive people and Asians need to like step up and get as aggressive as non-Asians. I mean, it's time. I guess the message that I would wanna share with the community is support each other. You know, it's, it's a pretty small community still relative to the rest of the media landscape and in the past, the community has been very prone to criticizing people if they accept certain roles or if they aren't speaking out more. But rather than criticizing people for not doing things, start doing it yourself. You know, start working on writing those roles or start pursuing ex executive level jobs. You know, I think that rather than continuing to criticize or complain about things. We need to be more proactive and, and, and try and be part of the decision-making process. That's the message I'd like to get out to the community. Hey guys, so as I was telling you before, I... Hello? Yo, Ryan, this is Randall. Randall who? of Randall Park. I know you didn't ask, but I came up with some nicknames for you. Yellow Mamba, Sriracha. But it'll be like, Sir Racha. It's my neighbor, Jessica Gomes. You mean Australian, Portuguese, Chinese, Sports Illustrated swimsuit model, Jessica Gomes? Whenever she comes by, it's like in bubble guts. Hey, Steven. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, hold on, I'm on the phone, so. when you asked to be about my skin regimen? Feel my feet. I no, seriously, it. feel that's it. mighty close. No, wow. really. Okay, that's perfect. Honey, I can't find rubies. Just thought I'd try something different. This is a date. This is not a date. This is a date. Hey, sorry I'm late. <laughs> what are you guys doing here? It's like an episode of the Dating Game. I'll be a cape role model. <laughs> awesome, thanks, man. Right on. Hey, what exactly do I have to do? Just be yourself. Cool. Do I have to wear pants? Can I be a role model? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I'm serious, but okay. <laughs> Thank you.
do what you love. It is super cliche, but I went through it. I went to college originally for nuclear medicine. Yeah, right? No, people don't even know what that is. Every time I call my dad, he's like, go do law school. It's so easy. <laughs> law school is not easy, man. Like, um, I can't do that. My mom, she wanted me to be a doctor, of course, but deep down, my passion was always art. We need to be more proactive. Asians need to step up. I mean, it's time. Hi, I'm Lisa Ling. You have to check out this campaign. It's at im-campaign.com.